Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word Is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay. After a few years of some observations, this has been a concern of mine. Are the two major political parties, being the Democrats and the Republicans, are they just swapping coons? Are these two major political parties in America just doing a plantation swap? And I need you to get in the comments and let me know what you think about this and give your input as well. Are these two political parties just doing a plantation coon swap? And I think that we should be concerned about this because we know that being a coon, a bellhop, a shine bone has never gotten black people anywhere and it has never gotten black people any respect. And I don't know if black people have even changed their behaviors overall and learn from being this type of a person, being a shine bone or a buck dancing coon. Um, a lot of our people are very insane minded. I'm not saying you the listener, but if you are a black person in America, you know what I'm talking about. So what's going on, as we know, many black people in America have finally, they finally got tired of the abusive relationship between the black community and the Democrat Party. A lot of people, not all. There's still a whole lot left. But a lot of black people in America have finally grown tired of this abusive relationship. It went on for years and years to no avail to the black community. They even threw one in there who was brown. He did absolutely nothing abusive relationship. Now, they have this hardcore white supremacist in office now named Joe Biden. And black people feel with him there, he just hit rock bottom. Like, like this guy, Joe Biden here, he's not even doing the good pandering that usually gets black people in their heart and in their spirit and black people go for it. He's not even doing that. Every day he's coming out being more blatant, He's becoming more boring to black people and more overt with his white supremacy. And a lot of black people really, really just want to love this dude. A lot of black people really just want to love him and, you know, want white people to like them and love him. I mean, all he has to do is the bare minimum. He, he can't even do that to make black people like him or black people just love. Because, you know, the relationship between his party and people like him, white men like him and black people, they don't have to do anything. Just do something. You know, Bill Clinton was doing it, coming out with the saxophone. Hillary Clinton, they're pulling hot sauce out their pocketbook. Stuff that's really going to want, you know, singing hip-hop songs, dances. This dude, Joe Biden, he ain't even doing that. He said, F it. And he's showing more and more that he does not give a F overtly. And I appreciate this kind of a crack of me personally. I prefer a overt white supremacist. And, that's, and that is, a lot of that is due to my people's relationship with white supremacists as well. I prefer an overt white supremacist. Okay, now, due to this, his behaviors and other things, a lot of black people are now looking at the Republican Party and this guy, Donald Trump, or just Donald Trump, period. Okay? Black people are saying we tired. A lot of us don't like Donald Trump, they're saying. A lot of black people don't like Donald Trump, but they're thinking maybe it makes more sense to give this guy a shot because this Biden and these other people, they clearly hate us. They clearly hate us. So more and more black folks are gravitating to this guy, Donald Trump, and I get it. Does it make sense? Yes. I also get it, too, if you're somebody that said, I'm not voting for him at all. Does that make sense to me? Yeah, that makes sense, too. Okay? But some people are going to vote. And that's what they're going to do. But here's a pattern that I'm noticing and I'm seeing. And it's not looking good, people. It's not looking good. I noticed that there are a lot of bow jangling, tap dancing behaviors that are packaged in with this new black people going over to the Donald Trump Republican Party thing. I noticed that. It's a lot of bow jangling and tap dancing. I'm seeing it a little bit too much. And the problem with that is nobody respects a coon. Nobody respects a coon. Nobody respects coon-like behaviors. Nobody respects these inferior servitude bootleg behaviors, but they are appreciated. They are appreciated. 
okay? Um, and by doing this, by going in with these behaviors with such a force, for black people, what it's going to do is it's going to have you starting off in a serious deficit. Regardless of what political party or candidate you're trying to support anyway, regardless, these coon like, and you know this from your history, these coon like behaviors are going to have you starting out in a deficit. Okay? You can look at every Democrat that the black people supported. They never respected the black community. The black people, the black community didn't do anything to make them respect them by demanding anything. You know, they got all the coon like bootleg behaviors from the black celebrities, the black mega churches, black Hollywood. And that trickled down to, of course, the people who many of us worship personalities. We have a spiritual illness. Many of us do worship personalities. And the whole energy was just horrible, coon like, sell out. You know, not worthy of being respected, you know. So now what's going on is black people are gravitating to this guy, Trump, in the Republican Party, who's still a white man. And a lot of these behaviors seem to be going right over there with him, I'm, with, with black people. I'm not seeing any change in these cool like behaviors in these books. I'm not seeing any change in this. And white people do not respect coons, yo. They do not respect coon-like behaviors. I don't care about nobody liking you, but white people do not. And I'm seeing a lot of this that's coming with the whole new Trump thing. It's coming with a lot of bootlick-type behaviors, a lot of bootlick energy, man. You know what I mean? And and that's, that's grounds for a, an abusive relationships. White people love to abuse coons and, you know, Physically abuse them, too. I'm seeing a lot of black people acting like this guy Trump is their new God and they're worshiping him as if he's coming to save you. Now, I get it. If you say I'm in the politics, I'm going to vote for him. And all, but all you can do is vote. I get that. You may sit around with your peoples. You all may talk politics, or whatever. And they may say, you know, what I mean, who who are you voting for? And you're like, I'm voting for Trump. And they like, ah, whatever. I get that. I get that whole, I get that part because some people, they want to be in politics. This is what they're going to do. I get that part. I'm going to vote for them. They, they might say, I'm going to vote for them. I get that. All you, but all you could do is vote. And being that all you could do is vote, vote, what I don't get is all these dangerous, super bojangling Negroes who are already starting off kissing this white man's draws. I mean, you, you, you people need to cut it out. I don't see how you ain't learned yet. Cut this insane behavior out. Cut it out. That's not pot. Cooning does not have to be part of politics. You do not have to be a coon. Nobody respects it. You know what I'm saying? I get it. You do your thing. You're one, two. You talk. Okay. What you going to do for us? Okay. Okay. He said, I'm going to do this, this, and that. Or he said he's going to do something that's ultimately going to benefit the people. You say, okay, boom. That's who I'm rolling with. I get it. But this whole thing with black people out running around kissing this white man's butt. Listen, man, that's dangerous. You don't have to be running around out here with this big red stupid hat on with people with people who are actually going to turn around and whip your black behind and shoot your beak off when he gets in. By the way, that's another aspect to it here. I'm seeing many. I'm seeing a lot of black folks running around with these white with these cracker Trump supporters. I'm seeing you Negroes going to their parties, you know, pulling out grills and making ribs with them and things like that. You know, all that, you know what I mean? Okay, you know, acting like you have the same political goals. It's impossible for white and black Americans to have the same political goals. I see a lot of us just being real much for these white folks. And yes, they do appreciate it. Those white Trump fans, yeah, they, they do appreciate it. All white people love a bellhop. They all love it, you know joining in with these white man gun groups and all this other stuff. Now, I get the gun thing. I get that. Don't get me wrong. I am for, you know, black people having guns and people having gun rights. You know what I mean? I'm for all that. But the problem with the black people who are sitting around with these, you know, these 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 inbred Trump weaklings is if he does get in, you got to understand these white people want to use their guns on you. Their guns are not for white people. They're for black people. OK, they don't have them for each other. If they did, you know what I mean? Why didn't all these little pale winklings do something? All these Trump fans. 
Why didn't they do something when they feel as though the election was stolen from them? They didn't do nothing but cry. To this day, they still pouting and crying. They're not getting active with them guns on them other white people who are holding them back. These guys are cowards and weaklings. They're waiting for their guy to get in. And in their minds, in the mind of white American Trump fans, a lot of them, the majority of them, okay, if Trump gets in, that's their green light to go back into more of their overt abuse and racism of black people. Yeah, they're going to do the whole thing acting like all oh, the illegals and build the wall. And yeah, these people out of here. But listen, don't you Negroes who are out here running around acting buddy with these white Trump supporters. Don't think that you ain't on the menu. You was, you on the menu. And they want your head. Roasting. On a stick, spinning with peppers and onions, marinade. That's how they want you, yo. That's how they want you. The way that white Americans operate, people like these Trump people, the, the way that they operate is they do things in a very cowardly way. You notice that when Trump got in office last time, they went out in super mode. They went in super at the airports, on the highways, just everywhere, period. You've seen these people, you know, kicking up their level of abuse because they felt as though they had somebody holding them down in office and we're going to do what we want. They were committing all kinds of racist crime. It, it, it stepped up. Y'all remember that? They was going super hard. And you also remember when Obama was in office. I remember this clearly because I was in law enforcement at the time. When Obama was in office, the white people was very mad. They were super mad. And so you've seen a lot of white people in law enforcement or white people who had positions that could control things, they would do things in a weasel type of way. That's why in Ob when Obama was in office, you've seen a, a whole lot, just in the media. I'm talking about the stuff that you heard about. You've seen a whole lot of white police officers and white people just blowing black people's heads off, blowing black people away, abusing them. They were doing that because they were mad because Obama was in office and they knew that made a lot of white people happy. And they felt as though you know what I mean? We can abuse our powers within the power that we have. You know what I mean? We can't do nothing about him, but we're going to get these Negroes dying. That's what they was doing. So as black folks were happy, the man that they were happy for, did absolutely nothing to protect them. Absolutely nothing at all to protect the people. Remember, he said, if I had a son, he looked like Trayvon. And that was the protection for the people. That's it. Do you remember that? Black people got up and applauded and clapped. I don't know what to say. So I'm saying regardless, nobody's going to ex nobody's going to protect you except you, man. That's all I'm saying, man. And all you Negroes who are out here barbecuing and boat jangling with these white Trump fans, you run around here with that big goofy hat on. They come in for you, too. Nobody respects a coon. Or that's how they look at you. They look at you as a weak Negro from jump. You know what I mean? And, and, and for some reason, black people, I noticed that we just can't take a perk. We can't take something. We can't get an alley-oop from a white person and keep it moving. And I'm, I'm talking about in general, outside of this whole political thing. You ever notice that, y'all? A lot of our people, we just can't get something. You know how many things, you know, white people have done things for me before that I benefited from, that I appreciated. But the bottom line is still the bottom line. For some reason, so many of our people, it's just weird. Like, it act, like as soon as a white person does something for them or it seems like they, you know, got a better outlook on something from white people, they just go ahead and just start worshiping white people's dirty draws. I'm like, chill, yo, chill, chill. I'm like, yo, take it, take the alley oop, take what you got, keep it moving. Just because a white person did something that worked in your favor does not change history or the current bottom line. What's up with that, though? I mean, what's with our people? It's real weird. As soon as a white person gives them a pat on the head or a blueberry scone and a coffee, they start acting like they got to put this white person's drawers on their head and run around like, chill, yo. You know what I mean? Chill. Dang. And this is crazy. Like, I've seen that. You've seen that, too, people at work, out in the world. They just can't just take something. I don't know. People, so what I'm saying here is this. This is what I'm saying. I'm seeing a lot of cooning and bow jangling in this whole that's coming with the whole Trump movement of black people going over to the Republican Party, that seems like this bootlicking and all this stuff is going there too in this switch. 
Nobody respects a weakling or a coon. Your politics are not their politics. Even if it's something that is agreed upon between the two that's going to benefit our people. I get that. But I see a lot of people making a big mistake. You know what I mean? They're making a big mistake. So go vote for who you got to vote for. I get it. You know what I mean? But then after you do it, just get back on your regular one, too. There's no need to go praising some white man who got your people effed up in the first place. They're all the same. Even if they do something, boom, stick the knife in 12, pull it out six. That ain't enough. That ain't enough. What Imam El Hajj Malcolm X said, what the Imam El Hajj Malcolm X, stick the knife in, come on, man, that ain't enough. So a lot of times we see people, right? One thing we're seeing, we see a lot of brothers, you know what I mean, who got caught up in the crime bill, the Joe Biden, uh, um, uh, um, <clears throat> my bad, Bill Clinton, Joe, the Democrats, whatever, the crime bill. We see a lot of brothers who have been able to come home. Trump pardoned a lot of these. He made a situation so that a lot of people can come home. And because of that, you're seeing sometimes, I'm not saying all, you seeing these dudes just out worshiping Trump's draws and just chill, yo, because it's people like him. And his people are the reason why you were in there the first. It don't matter. Democrat, Republic, they all they cousins, yo. It's them. They're the reason why you went in the first place. OK, so you got out. You weren't supposed to be in there anyway. You know what I mean? They pulled the knife out six. That ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. Stop praising these white men, yo, please. Come on. It, nothing comes with that. I don't care who it is. Trump, this one, that. Chill out, yo. Chill out. Anyway, easy.